Welcome to Yoga TX. My name is Savannah and today I have for you a 30 minute yoga practice that can be used at any time of the day when you want to make sure that every part of your body has been used in the way that it likes to be used and maybe you'll find some good pockets of relief and some hidden pockets of stress or tension that you might not have even known was there. So we'll go ahead and start at the very top of the mat. Bringing both of your hands over your low abdomen. And as you center the hands onto the low abdomen, you're really just feeling for any tension or unconscious gripping in the belly here. When the belly holds tense, it's really difficult for your diaphragm, your breathing muscle to drop down and properly expand the rib cage. That's when you start to see the breath getting pressed up towards the shoulders and the collarbones. So finding a sense of ease and softness in the belly is the first step to developing a smooth and subtle breath. And then your next breath in, pulling it in through the nostrils, noticing where the breath goes and expands. As you exhale, gently draw your navel back to the spine. Breathing in, release the abdomen. Let it balloon out in front of you like a Buddha belly. Exhaling, gently draw the navel back to the spine. Feel the ribs come in and the chest release next. Inhaling down to the abdomen. As the abdomen expands, maybe you feel the low ribs expand with you now. Exhaling, navel draws back, ribs hug in, chest and collarbones release the rest of the breath. Taking some time to find the pace of inhale and exhale that works best for you. Breathing into a point of fullness, but not to tension. And exhaling until the round of breath feels complete and done with. With your next breath in, clasp your fingertips and flip your palms forward in front of you, stretching the arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, unhooking the palms, bringing the hands towards the sides of the thighs as you slide the hands down. You can always pause with the elbows on top of the thighs or you can continue down towards the floor or the ankles. Give your head a few gentle shakes from side to side. Grounding down through the big toes and through the heels, spiraling the thighs and the knees to point forward in front of you. With your next breath in, sweeping the arms out to the side, lifting the chest forward and up, coming all the way to standing. Arms will reach over the head again. And on the breath out, releasing left hand down, right arm reaches up and over your cheek. With the breath, inhaling to reach your arms up, look up. Exhale, right hand comes down, left arm comes over the left cheek. And then creating a tick-tock motion with the breath, inhaling through center. Giving time for the exhale to slowly take you over. Inhale might even start a moment before you begin lifting up. So because the main focus in yoga is the breath, I like to start the breath a moment before the movement. So that way it's guiding the spine and you're also not trying to add the breath in once you get into a position because it's already there. It's what brought you there. Inhaling the arms, reach back up. One last time to finish this round over to the right or to the left, wherever you're at. Breathing in, arms reach up. This time we'll bend the knees and sit the weight back into the heels, shifting the hips back behind you. So if you feel the weight is drifting forward quite a bit, reach your hands forward until you can counterweight and feel the hips pulling back. Bring the hands down and wide, lifting up through the chest, finding length through the lower back, gently drawing the pubic bone up and the front of the ribs down if you feel them flaring out. Then we'll sweep the arms forward and up by the ears, as you exhale, lay the rib cage over the thighs, keeping the knees generously bent here. 
Step your left foot back behind you. Seal your left heel down. Rise up with the arms reaching out to the side and over your head. Straighten the right leg as you're inhaling. Exhale, cactus the arms, bending the elbows as the right knee bends. Inhale, press the right leg straight. Reach the arms up. Exhale, cactus the arms, bend the right knee, feel the elbows pull down, gathering the shoulders together and back. Two more times with your breath. Inhale, sweeping the hands forward and up. Front leg straightens. On the exhale, bending the elbows, bending the front knee. Once more. Inhale, lift the air up. Exhale, settling into your pose, keeping that cactus shape with the elbows. The front knee is bent. Press the arms actively to the wall behind you. Press down through the left heel, gently drawing the pubic bone up towards the navel. So if you could imagine your pelvis as a bowl of water, instead of tipping the water out to the front, hold it and contain it here. Find three inhales and three exhales, either lifting the gaze up or guiding the gaze directly in front of you at eyes height. Letting the shoulders lift up by the ears. And then exhaling, the hands will come all the way down and around the right foot. Tent yourself up on your fingertips if that helps. Step the left foot forward. Bend the knees, drop the weight of the head. Whenever you're bending the knees, you're creating a hinge in the hips and pulling the hips back so that there's no space between the abdomen and the thighs. The thighs work as a shelf for the back so that there's not a pulling sensation coming from the lower spine. And then with your next breath in, spiraling the thighs towards the midline, the knees to point forward. Exhale to sit the hips back. Inhale to reach the hands forward and up, coming up to your chair pose again. Notice the tendencies. Do you dip the pelvis forward? Do you flare the rib cage out? Can you gather the front of the body with an exhale? And then bringing the hands down towards the sides of the body. Straighten the legs. We'll step the right foot back behind us. Seal the right heel down. The front leg will straighten. Breathe in to sweep the hands forward and up. Exhale, bending at the elbows. The left knee will bend. Inhale, arms straighten, front leg straightens. Like you have ropes above you, actively pull the arms down, feeling the strength of the shoulder blades glide down the back as the front knee bends. Three more times with your breath. You can be as expressive as you want to be here. Maybe that's sweeping the arms forward and up like a wave coming over you before you settle into the cactus shape with the arms, rebending into the front knee. Once more before we pause. Exhale, elbows bend, front knee is bent. Envision the pelvis as a bowl of water again. Instead of tipping it out the front, can you contain the water? Pressing down through the back heel, grounding down through the outer edge of the left foot. Actively spread the fingertips and press the arms back behind you. Draw the head on top of the spine. Staying connected to the breath. Exhaling the hands down towards the floor. This time we'll lift up the back heel so the right toes are pointing down. The left foot will step behind us. We'll deeply bend both knees and draw the hips up and back, pressing the front of the mat away from us, staying buoyant with the legs, turning the head from side to side. I even like to take some shoulder shrugs here, drawing the shoulders up to the ears, rolling them away. Letting the elbows bend as you do so. With your next breath in, keeping the bend in the left knee, stretch your right leg directly back behind you, bringing that right heel at about your hips height. On this exhale or next, step your right foot towards the middle or towards the top of the mat. You can always help your foot get there. Seal your back heel down. Breathe in, turning your chest to the left, sweeping both arms over your head as your front leg straightens. 
On this exhale, the right knee will bend, the arms will come out to a T for a warrior two pose. Taking your gaze behind you and in front of you, and then moving with the breath again. Inhale, pick the air up, straighten the right leg, maybe you lean back a bit. Exhale, press the air down, bend into the right knee, take the gaze over the fingers. Two more times. And exhale, lowering the right forearm all the way down to the right thigh. Reach your left arm in front of you and over your left ear. Let your elbow bend a bit. And imagine you're holding onto a lasso. We'll make some small circles around the head in front of you, reaching over your ear, using the heels for some strength as you press into the floor and the right forearm as a stabilizer as you press it into the right thigh. Great, one more breath, inhaling as you sweep the left arm over the head. Exhale, left hand comes all the way down towards the floor. Turn your left toes down towards the floor, bring your right hand down towards the floor. Step your left foot up a little bit closer. Seal your back heel down and begin to slowly rock the hips back on the exhale. Bending into the right knee a bit more as you inhale. Again, maybe you're starting the exhale a moment before the hips shift back and the weight of the head drops. Inhale, front knee bends, pull the chest forward, drift the gaze forward. Exhale, draws the hips back. Again, that front leg does not need to be straight. The purpose of this pose is not to straighten the legs, but to stretch out the back of the legs. So if you feel a stretch, even with your leg, barely out of a deep bend, you're already there. That's the point. Nowhere else to be. One more time, draw the hips back. Lower the weight of the head down. This is always a wonderful position to use blocks underneath your hands. I'm lucky, I'm not even five feet, so I'm really close to the ground. So don't judge yourself for not reaching the floor, I'm just a lot closer to the floor than you are. One more breath out. And then we'll re-bend the right knee. Bring your hands down to the mat. Lift the left heel up, step the right foot back, bend your knees deeply and pitch the hips up and back for a downward facing dog. Keep your right knee bent as you stretch the left heel back behind you. Flare out through the left toes, take a breath in through the nose. Exhale to step the left foot towards the middle or towards the top of the mat. Seal your back heel down. Use a breath in to turn the ribs to the right, come up to standing, reach your arms over your head with the front leg straight. Exhale, left knee bends, arms come out to a T, right hand behind you, left hand in front of you. Continue to move with the breath, inhale begins, and then you're straightening the front leg, reaching the arms up and back if that feels nice. Exhale, settle down, feel the floor. Continuing to move with the breath, noticing when you start to move quickly and how that affects the breath. See if you can keep this slow and smooth quality, not only to the movement, but how you're taking in the information and pulling in each next breath. And then left knee will bend, left forearm will come down towards the left thigh. Reach your right arm up and start to circle your right arm over your head, behind you, reaching in front of you, and over again. Notice where your inhale and your exhale would feel best. So for me, I like breathing in when the right arm is drifting over the right cheek, exhaling as I sweep the arm back and down, I'm using the strength of the legs here to stabilize the back, the left forearm grounding into the left thigh, possibly even dropping the weight of the head. And then with your next breath out, 
Take your hands towards the floor, bend into the left knee. It might help to step your right foot up a bit, turning the right toes forward. We'll start with that bent knee position. Take an inhale here and on a breath out, gently pull the left hip back. Might not need to be much in order to feel that stretch through the back of the left leg. Breathing in, the chest pulls forward as the front knee bends. Exhale, the chest pulls back, the spine rounds, the belly stays close to the thigh. The breath is king, the breath is boss, telling you when to move back, when to move forward, at what speed and for how long. So I'm not holding my breath in to pause and I'm not holding my breath out to pause. There's an overlapping of movement to breath happening here. Okay, and then pulling back, staying there, walking your hands back if that would feel nice. Two to three breaths. Rebending into the front knee, planting your hands towards the top of the mat. Step your right foot back so the right heel is up. The left foot will join it towards the back of the mat. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, bending the elbows, lowering the knees, the belly, the chest. Keep the heart pulling forward. Point the toes back behind you so the tops of the feet are on the mat. Each breath you take in, you'll reach one arm forward and extend the opposite leg up and back. As you exhale, lower the left hand down, if that's the one you reached forward, and the opposite leg down. Inhale, opposite arm sweeps forward, opposite leg sweeps back. Exhale, they both come down. You might even bring the forehead a little lower towards the floor. One more time on each side. Inhale, opposite arm, opposite leg. Exhale. Breathing out, tuck your toes, engage your core, engage the glutes, hold the torso strong as you press yourself up from the mat. Take your hips all the way back towards your heels, opening up the knees, dropping the weight of the hips back behind you. Feeling the breath, funnel back in, and then press back out. Starting to slow it down. And then rising up to your hands and knees. We'll bring the right shin up towards the right wrist. And the right foot will be in front of the left thigh so that we can sit onto our hips here. Once you come onto your hips, make sure this is comfortable. So any little adjustment or shift that you'd like to make, give that to yourself. Take a breath in, sweeping both arms up and over your head. And as you exhale, lean into your right hand as the right arm reaches away. Make space for you to lower your right forearm if that's available. Keep reaching the left arm over the left ear and then slowly rotate the rib cage down towards the floor. You can use your arms as pillars to help puff up your back, dropping the chin towards the chest. Or again, maybe it's forearms that feels better for you. If the head is staying lifted, either reach actively through the crown of the head, and lining up the head and the neck with the spine, or maintain the strength of the shoulders and lower the weight of the head down. The one thing you wanna avoid is sinking in the shoulders and sinking in the neck. So one thing stays stable so that another thing can start to soften. I want you to start to feel the breath into the back of the ribs and the sides of the ribs, almost like with each breath in, you're growing a turtle shell behind you.
And then we'll begin to walk the hands back. Plant the right hand on the outside of the right hip. Point your toes. You might even bring your left heel in a little bit closer towards your left hip so that you can roll onto the tops of the shins. Spiral your right fingers out to the side so that you can open up the right shoulder. Reach your left arm back behind you over the left ear. Breathing deeply towards the abdomen and the sides of the ribs. And lowering the hips back down. And we'll switch sides. There's two ways to switch sides. First one is however you want. Second one is spiraling over the feet and turning the knees to the side. So we'll have the left knee pointing to the left. The right inner knee will point down towards the floor. Reach both arms up towards the ceiling on the inhale. Exhale, left hand reaches far out to the side, making space for your left forearm to drop down. Right arm is reaching over the right ear and you're really trying to arc the rib cage up towards the ceiling. That's why sometimes it can be helpful to bring the arm in front of the ear. And then spiraling the ribs down, using the arms as pillars to puff up the back and lower the chin towards the chest. Or dropping the forearms down, keeping the crown of the head actively reaching in line with the spine. Third option, shoulders stay strong and stable, but the weight of the head lowers. And each time you breathe out, gently drawing the navel and the front of the ribs towards the back. Breathing into the back of the ribs and the sides of the ribs. It's where 60% of your lung tissue lives. Finishing this breath and taking one more. Walking your hands back to your left hips, plant the left hand on the outside of your left hip. Point your toes, bring your feet nice and close to your hips so that you can press onto your shins and reach the right arm back over your cheek or towards the space behind you. If you feel like it's difficult to lift the hips up, you can always walk your hands a little closer to you and spiral the fingers out behind you. Two more breaths, dropping the weight of the head. And breathing out as you come back down. Great. Point your toes towards the top of the mat. Bring your hands next to the hips so that your fingers are pointing forward and your index fingers and your thumbs are almost framing your hips. We'll lower onto our forearms. Use your elbow points as grounding points so that instead of sinking with the ribs, you're rolling the shoulders back and maintaining that pressure into the mat. Spread the toes out, reach the knees forward. Pause here, inviting the breath to come up and across the collarbones or drop the weight of the head back. Taking one more breath. And then gently letting the rib cage soften down, lifting the chin back to the chest. If you extended it back, let the elbows widen here. The arms will come out wide and high, taking a breath in. Exhaling the knees up and over to the left. Taking the gaze to the right hand or to the space on the right side of your body. From here, closing the eyes. Staying with the breath as it navigates through the shape into the lungs, exploring around. And gently pulling the knees back up through center. Inhaling the legs up high. Flex the toes. Wiggle the ankles. 
On this breath out or next, bending the knees, lifting the knees up and over to the right for a t twist as you take your gaze over towards the left arm or to the space on the left side of your body. Close the eyes, become curious about the breath again. Finishing this breath and taking one more. And drawing the knees back up through the chest. Wrapping the hands around the shins. Pausing here, stretching out the low back. And both legs will stretch up, holding the back of the thighs. Lengthen through the crown of the head to the wall behind you, and allowing the knees to bend as much as they would like to so that the legs and the back both feel comfortable and at ease. And we'll take a few moments feeling the blood flow from our toes and the feet. Sink back into the shins, towards the kneecaps, through the thighs and towards the hips. Very relaxing sensation. And then one leg at a time. And releasing the feet towards the mat. Noticing what would be most comfortable for your body. Keeping the knees bent and knocking the knees into one another. Or lengthening the legs long onto the mat. Stretching the arms out wide. And letting the weight of the floor absorb the weight of the body. Each exhale, body melting into the mat a little bit more. Noticing the sounds that are surrounding you. And drawing the palms over the heart. Resting with the hands there. In the yoga tradition, our consciousness resides in the heart, not in the mind. So while it's very Western to analyze, critique, and think about how something is going, yoga is asking us to drop in, sense, feel, and attune to the present moment. We'll clasp the fingertips together. Extend the palms forward and over the head as you breathe in. Exhaling as you roll over to your side, resting on your ear, and letting the hips stack and the knees stack. And guiding yourself back up to a seat. Bringing the palms together again, immediately closing the eyes and drawing the thumbs to the center of the heart.
and from mine to yours. Namaste.